Hi, I'm Matt McCatch for the Hardcore Camping Gear channel, the channel where we explore and review the camping gear that you need to be self-contained, self-reliant, and most of all comfortable camping in the outdoors without having to spend tens of thousands of dollars on an expensive RV or travel trailer. This morning, my wife, who is a marathon runner, said, grab your stuff, let's go check out this park where they're going to have uh, some kind of race, some half marathon or marathon, something like that. And I never actually been to the park. I didn't really take the time to do any research on it. I kind of thought it was going to be more like a state park with miles and miles of trails and kind of really be out in the, the bush, so to speak. And it turned out to be a really nice park, but more of kind of like a community park. But anyways, before leaving the house, I grabbed a little hiker survival kit that I had put together years earlier and kind of wanted to go through some of the contents of that as well as the pack that I'm carrying. So I've got two bags in the trunk of this sedan. This We just use this as kind of a daily driver running around town. Um, and I've got two bags full of different gear depending on the situation that arrives in regard to kind of a get home bag, so to speak. And in one of the bags, I had my little pocket hiker survival kit. So I took that out. I also took my stainless steel water bottle and shoved it in that little green bag. And we're going to go inside where it's a little bit warmer and kind of talk about that because I'm really starting to reevaluate the whole concept of the pocket survival kit. I just don't think it's realistic. On the other hand, uh, you don't necessarily want to be schlepping one of these things around for like a one hour hike or even like a three hour hike necessarily. You know, just hey, going out with the wife, maybe have a little picnic. Do you really need to take something like this for all eventualities? I think not, but maybe. So that's what I want to kind of explore in this video. The difference if there's kind of like a middle ground between a pocket survival kit uh, and this lugging around something big like this that you guys could take if you're just, you know, you're camping and you want to go out for a couple hours for a hike and you don't want to be empty handed, but at the same time, you don't want to take your whole, your whole big, you know, three week in the bush adventure kit. So let's go inside where it's a little bit warmer and we'll get into it. So I had all of the contents of my pocket survival kit that I made in this container. Filmed this once, realized I didn't have my audio mic plugged in. So I'm going to film this again. The stuff's already spread out here on the table and I'm going to go over this stuff with you. This is the container and I bought this at TJ Maxx one day a couple years ago when I was shopping with my wife. Um, and it just struck me as the right size to fit into a cargo pants pocket, the lower cargo pants pocket, and hold the basics. Now, when I set this kit up, admittedly, uh, it was kind of a Hail Mary kit, you know, a kit of last resort, so to speak. Um, but I'm really rethinking the entire concept of the pocket survival kit because I, I don't think it's sufficient. But let's go over the, the contents. Now, the reason I built this like this and I bought this container is that you can buy pocket hiker survival kits, pocket camping survival type kits uh, at, you know, most outdoor stores like REI Co-op or Sportsman's Warehouse. The best seem to be made by Adventure Medical Kits or SOL. I think they're, they're the same company. And there was one specifically designed by Doug Ritter of Equipped.com, which is an amazing website. If you haven't visited it, check it out. It's been a few years since I've looked at it, but Doug uh, has been doing this stuff for a long time and seems to really know his stuff. Um, so I'm going to go over the contents of this, but that being said, I don't think you should run out and buy a commercial kit. Now, if you read online, pretty much everyone will tell you that in order for them to hit not just uh, adventure medical kits, but any of the pocket survival kits, most survival kits actually in general, in order to hit their price point, uh, they've got to kind of compromise on the quality of the gear that goes into the kit. So it made more sense to me to kind of buy the individual pieces and put together uh, my own little pocket kit and I tried to hit as many of the 10 C's, Dave Canterbury's 10 C's of, of uh, survivability and sustainability with this little kit, but it really falls short. And my thought process is this, is maybe expand the size of the kit to take up the volume of this bag. I think we get kind of closer to the mark. Now I just grabbed this bag and I threw my stainless steel con uh, container, canteen in this pouch as well as my pocket hikers kit, but I, I, I didn't design it. There's a lot more pockets. There's a lot more stuff that could go into this to make the whole grab and go, just going out for an hour hike survival kit a little bit more realistic, I think. 
So that being said, let's go over the contents. Uh, and then after you finish watching this video, maybe you can post in the comment section below some things that I could add uh, to build out this as being more of the grab and go rather than trying to fit everything into your pocket. It just doesn't seem, just doesn't seem realistic. So what do we have that came out of this? I have a little LED flashlight. This is just a cheapie. I got this off Amazon. This, can't remember what it's called. It's basically a life straw. It's for filtering water. You can drink out of a stream. In theory, I have not tested this yet. Um, I have tested the bigger life straw. Uh, I took it with me down to Bogota, Colombia and used it to, uh, to drink from there and it tasted very plasticky. Um, there's also an additional filter, a backup filter. Uh, we've got a lighter, a little red Bic lighter. We have a ferro rod with a magnesium strip on it with the striker built in. The whistle. Whoop, wrong side. We have some uh, bank line. We have a plastic Ziploc baggie folded up. Use this to carry water. This was a recommendation from Doug Ritter. Uh, it, is a, it is a CRKT, like a little mini neck knife. And it's pretty cool. I mean, it's so small, but I mean, you can still do work with this. It's not a, it's not a piece of junk. I'm not sure if they still make these or not, but if they do, this thing's pretty cool. In addition, I have a little plastic bag with a Fresno lens, which could be used to also start a fire, as well as some cash stuck in here, because you never know when you're gonna need cash. I've got some Band-Aids, a little boo-boo kit, and also some water purification tabs. Rounding it out is a Mylar rescue blanket that claims to be waterproof and weatherproof. Highly doubt it. Haven't tested this, but highly doubt it. Um, so, you know, we're out there and what crosses my mind is what happens if, let's say my wife breaks an ankle or something and we're, you know, six, seven miles down the trail. There's no way I'm gonna be able to kind of carry her back to the car where we can call for help. And if there's no cell phone, you know, who knows? You get turned around, you get lost. Uh, is this really gonna provide the level of shelter that I need should it start raining okay and I, I need to set something up improvise a shelter so that she's not sitting there in the rain and get back to the car so that I can call for help probably not gonna happen especially considering we we are in the high desert so there's not a lot of trees that I can like string up a ridge line so I, I'm really questioning the, the the versatility and the functionality of a little pocket survival kit. I mean, it very much is a, a Hail Mary last resort type of deal. And being out in the high desert, we don't have the trees that I could, you know, we're just very limited. So my thought process is this. I got this bag, I got this idea for this bag from Meat Trapper. I can't remember his name, but on YouTube, he, his channel is called Meat Trapper. He's really an amazing guy. He's out there actually trapping beaver and other types of, of wild game uh, to feed his family. And he uses a little bag like this. So he turned me on to this size bag. Uh, and it seems to make a lot of sense because it's not so big that if you go out for a day hike with your wife or maybe a couple of her friends, you know, you're not walking around with this big old pack on your back looking ridiculous. So, um, you know, in the context of that, what I, my thought process is this. Um, put a tarp in here, an actual dedicated tarp that could be used for a shelter and then carry with me a hiking pole. And that way I'd have the ability, in addition to this stuff, to rig up some kind of improvised shelter, even if there aren't any trees around to run a ridge line through. Now, I just thought of this. Also, it's carrying on me a little Emerson licensed, uh, this is a Kershaw knife that I had on me, as well as a multi-tool, a Leatherman multi-tool. I also had a firearm just because well, obvious reasons. If you can't figure out why, uh, me explaining it to you isn't gonna probably help you. Um, so th this is pretty much it, but really where it came down to, the failing I think of this kit, the main failing, was with the shelter component. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below because I'd really be curious to see if any of you guys have kind of thought about this type of thing, you know, without having to lug your, your full bushcraft kit Something that, you know, basically an entire kit could be built around this size bag 
that in the event something like that happens, it starts to rain and somebody breaks an ankle, you can't get back to your car uh, or one person can't get, you need to kind of leave them there and run back to get help, uh, that they're going to be all right for the time being. So again, not, not we're not talking about living off the land for three weeks. We're talking about your typical kind of just out for a one hour, two hour, three hour hike. You're five to 10 miles in, something happens. Um, what do you do? What do you do? Hey, I'm Adam Katz for the Hardcore Camping Gear channel. Uh, if you haven't yet, please like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and please comment below because I'm really, really curious about your thoughts on how we can build out something that's going to be better than a pocket survival kit without having to take your full bushcraft backpack, Alice pack, you know, your whole setup. Thanks again, guys. We'll talk to you soon.